Oh, that's a few. Good. So anybody in the process, like self-taught and want to be a freelance developer, or like go to full time. In between, okay, so most of you, I will say, are very professional developer. So if I make any technicality mistake, please correct me because I am learning. I am learning. Okay, so today I'm going to share with you like how I've self-taught to be a freelance WordPress developer. So this, for my background, is always mainly on front end where I care a lot about the UX and like the interface and things like that. I'm going to go into that more later on. But let me just show you what I've done so far. Um, so, I was very lucky to have been able to do a few websites. Okay, so my first, when I first started WordPress was back in 2010. What I was doing was, I was just mainly blogging, okay? So, I didn't even know that I want to get into a tech background. My background was actually aviation management. And my first job, my first career, I was actually a show presenter in the zoo. So as my talk is a bit flashy, it's because it's my show presenter, you know. It's a be a dancer as well. Yep. So in the early days of my career, I was a show presenter. I never thought that oh, one day I will be making website for people. Okay. But here I am. Very fortunate to meet people like the open source community and people from WordPress. So these are my tools of the trade, which I use. Like I usually have a boiler template where I just reuse it over and over and over again. So when the website that you see just now, it's really like I have a set of code where I just kind of, I just edit it, edit like according to what my clients need. So initially it was really just WordPress and jQuery. So in the very beginning, because I was a self-taught, you kind of, you don't know what you don't know, right? So one day I was asking, because my brother is a computer science guy, I was like, I, I'm stuck with uh, something that I want to do, like some animation stuff. And I went, to, went over to him and I said, hey, do you know how to solve this thing? Like, uh, it's in jQuery, you know, you know, like, um, then he was like sitting there, I was like, what is this? Now I was like, it's JavaScript, right? It's like the JavaScript syntax. I didn't know that. At that point of time, I didn't know that jQuery is not exactly JavaScript. Then he's like, no, 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 it's not JavaScript. I was like, what are you talking about? It's, it's jQuery, it's JavaScript, right? It's the same thing. So, you know, like, this are like so many things that I do not know. But the thing is, my client don't need to know. Not to teach you the wrong stuff, but later we'll, we'll speak more on that, on why I'm able to do it. Okay, so, okay, and also like from CSS, I use SAS because SAS, if uh, you're front end, SAS is really good for front end. I feel that it, it makes, it makes uh, building a website really easy and some of the additional stuff like uh, Genesis framework is a paid framework, but uh, it's really easy to build on, a lot of customization. Like the website that you've seen here, it's actually all from Genesis, but you can do a lot of uh, different stuff on Genesis because you just kind of like get things here and there and put and plop it in. Okay, and even Espresso, if people want WooCommerce, yep, if they want to have like a uh, shot of like the one to have payment gateway and things like that. And of course, photos, free pick and splash. Okay, so how did I get my first client? So my background is I have no experience sort of no experience. I have no certificate in web development, although I'm getting one now, so I'm trying to go into the legit path. And I have, my degree is not in computer science. And actually, I don't even have a degree. So it's quite amazing. So what I did was I volunteered for MPO. So I, I built out like a few portfolio and things like that. And then I go and join uh, this nonprofit. I was like helping out, organizing events and I was like telling them, I could build your website for you with WordPress if you want. And they were like, they would say, okay, like sure, like why don't you give a try? It's, it's kind of like a trading, right? I build a website for them for free and then they give me like um, good testimonial. They're not obliged to, but they did give me a good testimonial. So <laughs> it speaks volume. Um, yeah, and one thing that I realized was I was actually doing my own event startup previously. So when I go to my client, I'm sort of like, so, so why I'm able to do it, right? It's not, it's, because of the target audience I'm actually targeting, I'm not targeting those super huge enterprise that needs like a lot of security issues and things like that. My clients are mainly small startup, which means they're tight on money. So when you have tight on money, you kind of do trade off, right? So that, this is where I come in. So there's, there's a gap. So, so when you have a, when you get a good marketing fee, they kind of like, they won't go around and sit, sit you down on a one hour kind of interview, that kind of thing. So they won't do that. They will say, show me your portfolio. What can you do? Can you do this? So most of the website, if you can see, is informative website. I don't do like things that is like super advanced, like, like getting users and things like that. No, 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 it's, it's just like informative website. 
Uh, I think the furthest that I went is like somebody actually asked us to do like a, a website where they want to do like a platform where people can do an Eventbrite kind of thing. So I actually said yes to that, but I was, I was telling my partner, I wouldn't do that because I would never be able to do that. Let's outsource. You know, like this is like the tricks that you do, you know, like, like if you can't do that, you can find someone to do it because I was running my own startup. Okay. So after that, so because like I have no experience whatsoever, like I was like reading a lot of things, reading on how do I use like all the tools to fit in. How do I make my clients happy? Okay, like some story that I have with my clients is that just I think just this week, uh, I was telling my client, okay, um, you need to do your own DNS, you need to get your own server. And it's just like, oh my gosh, how do I do it? How do I do it? Like, like, like can you show me? Like, can you show me that kind of thing? So I have to like sit down and then tell her, like, show her how to do it, how to register, and things like that. So how do you keep your sanity in that way? Because like a lot of clients will start to ask you for changes. That's my own experience, you know. It's, it's usually when they have very, very little budget, then they want to have like the godly treatment, you know. Like this is what I experienced. But not to, but some clients are really, really fantastic. I would say like some clients are amazing. So far, I think all the clients are very, very fantastic. But because they come from a background where they don't understand like what needs to be done, they will ask a lot, a lot, a lot, and they didn't know that there is something called boundaries. Okay, <laughs> like nine o'clock. Hey, how, how? I have people who call me at 11 o'clock. Actually, it's my very good friend, so I cannot say anything. It's like, wait, can you help me, please? It's like, I, I don't know what happened. The database is like, then was like, okay, first, I have to slowly walk him through, but I have to teach him a lesson on boundaries. Please call me between this time and this time because I need to sleep, okay? So this is what happened. Like, usually I have a questionnaire. We get a structure of what they want. And then I do a mock-up, and then if they say, yes, approve, okay. Then I will do the coding and everything. Although sometimes after I do the coding, they were like, hey, actually, I want this, you know. But, like, because, because when, you are, when you just started out, you were like, okay, I, I will just do whatever you tell me to do because I'm very new. I don't have any experience, okay. But well, well, after going through all this, I feel that it's really, really okay to say no to clients sometimes. I think one thing that I did that I got how a lot of scolding from my brother was that there was this client where they said they have two box, they wanted two box, whereas the term and condition, they said, I want people to scroll through the terms and condition. This first box, then after that, they scroll through the second box. Then after that, there's an OK button for them to click to the next thing. So I was like, in my mind, I was like, OK, the user is not going to get it. It's not very intuitive, but I still did it. OK, so I showed my brother, do you think it's a, it's a good idea to do it? And then he sat down, and then he looked at it. Do you think the user will be able to get it? I was like, no, I don't think so. I was like, but it's what the client wants, right? So I should do it for the client. Then my brother is like, people hire you because they think you are the expert. You know, you don't just do whatever your client wants because your clients sometimes they really don't know what they want, which is actually true, which is what I learned as a freelancer. So it's very eye-opening, like what I learned through this journey. But uh, I will say if I have a chance to, I would really love to be able to go through a dedicated program and structure where I can learn all the right things because during my freelance time, um, sorry to say, there's a lot of cowboying, there's a lot of bad code thrown out here and there, although I'm trying to get to the right path. Yep, so this is what I learned so far as a freelancing, and I'm very happy and lucky that I'm actually working in a tech company now, learning the right stuff, yes. Okay, and so that marks the end of my talk. This is my Facebook and my blog. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. Any questions? 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 Okay, please follow me. Yes. Take, 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 take more photo of this. Huh? <laughs> All right, very funny stuff over there. Yeah. Yeah, if you want the structure, I think I'll be putting that up as well. Like some of the structure that I use to navigate through my way of uh, my clients and things like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm very curious uh, when you were starting with no experience. How did you manage the sysadmin part of like system administration, setting up the server, setting up the email, this kind of thing. Oh, uh, basically I use HostGator and then I YouTube okay. my way through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically it's really all like, if you look at this, right, it's all the very, very simple stuff. It's just that I think about what the client needs. And if I can solve the problem, good. They don't need to know what I do. They don't need... I mean, I would actually say performance is something that I still don't know and would love to love to learn. But like, you, 
if you look at these websites, right, these websites are like informative websites. So it's not a lot of load on the server. There's not a lot of crazy calling and things like that. So I'm still able to cowboy my way in, but I definitely want to do things the proper way, like learning the proper back end and stuff. Yeah, so I'm on that path, on that path. Yeah. But, um, you know, you can start off using uh, managed tools, uh, and, you know, basically when there are problems, they will explain it to you what's going on. Then you can learn a little bit there, then pick up something like, um, you know, um, what's that, uh, Digital Ocean or, or Lino, yeah. mm -hmm. and then build it up. The guide's there to set up a LAMP stack. It's pretty much foolproof. It tells you what command to write. Mm. After a while, you might hit problems. They're going to spend hours to dig it up, and it's just going to be the same lessons, you know. You spend hours trying to get the thing correct, but most of the time, you're just Googling it. Yeah. Mm. So eventually, you come to a stage where you understand, and I think that's when you, you know, uh, realize that uh, you don't really need to um, depend on others. You can just pick it up yourself. Experiment on your own side, not your client side. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> so, yes? uh, um, so after you develop the website, right, do you hand it fully over to the client or you have a maintenance uh, maintenance contract with them? Because uh, mm. because the hosting actually matters. Uh, mm. It's like if you're gonna hand it over to a chicken rice store seller, right? Mm. Having it on like digital ocean AWS might not help mm. for them. Whereas for shared hosting, yeah, it's, it's limited, but it's a bit easier. For them. So, I, uh, which, which one do you do? Do you so actually hand over to them? Or so, I was actually quite lucky because, like, I mean, I don't have a lot of clients. Like, I think, like, at most, like, 10 maybe. But, like, most of, but some of my clients are repeated. They, they just, like, want, like, additional stuff. But uh, I think most of them actually know how to handle host and server. So, I'm quite surprised, you know? Like, I mean, like, it's so user-friendly and intuitive nowadays, right? Just fill up this form, okay, what do you want? Okay, usually they take the cheapest option, which is like one website, that kind of thing. And then they will like, otherwise, like, so for the MPO that I was working with, right, they actually have an IT company working for them. So me coming in is really like a, a gift to them because they say, okay, yes, we don't have to pay this company so much money. Please do it for us for free. So it's really like a trade-off, like wherever you can actually find a trade-off and value exchange and this whole thing. Yeah, but... So far, I think the only current, the, the client that will need help in hosting and server will be uh, the current client that I'm doing a tuition agency website for, which is also informative. It's not like where they have to book and things like that. So for that, I think that will be need, uh, they will need a bit more help. And, but usually I provide documentation, a lot of screenshots and things like that. Yeah, so I think I'm one of the rare few that actually enjoy writing documentation. But yeah, <laughs> I think it's one. I just like to take the pictures. Okay, this, you do this, you do this. I mean, my background is like, I was a kindergarten coach actually, like sports coach, so I like to teach. So this is one of my strengths, uh, I feel, in this, yeah. Okay, uh, question, yes. Um, a couple of years ago, there used to be like uh, some initiatives by the government, mm. with, like certain grants. Mm. Uh, 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 how, is it, how is the landscape now today? Yes. Oh, I, I have no idea actually, I have no idea because because for what I do, like I don't, I don't run like a. I mean, like my, I although I do from startup, but we don't tap on that grants though. Yeah, we are not that big to tap on that grants. Uh, there's one by ICT, mm. 5K, you know, yeah, yeah, whatever. yeah. I think it might be tighter, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Yeah, yeah. But they ha they have a recently they have a I don't know that's the. Improvement, something I don't know that they have like a few different components like marketing, branding, like or like WooCommerce, that kind of thing. I don't know, yeah, that, that I'm really not sure about that landscape. It's not free money, though, as yeah, it was. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.